So this is an introduction to um, using interpolation in Python. We're going to start with our standard boilerplate uh, numpy and matplotlib, and to that we'll be adding a library from scipy for interpolation. So the key concept is where we have two arrays of given data, so xg and yg, g for given. And these would normally be computed by you, someone gives them to you, they might be data that you uh, acquired experimentally. And you have discrete data points, and you want to find the values of y at intermediate points. So we'll call these x want and y want. So we know the x want that we want points at, and we want to find the corresponding y points. And these aren't in our original set, so we want to interpolate to find those intermediate values. <clears throat> so here's an image uh, illustrating this. So we have a set of data. In this case, we generated it so that we could uh, both plot it and illustrate what we have. And so these blue points would be the given data points, the blue circles. And then this star is some intermediate point that we want. So again, we've got an array of x given data, an array of y given data, and then a, an x want point, and we find the corresponding y want point at some intermediate location. <clears throat> so the question is how to find this intermediate values, that is values that are between those that are part of the data. And there's several ways that we can go about doing this, um, such as we could do a curve fit to the data, and then we could evaluate from that curve. We could take the closest data point. That's probably the simplest thing to do, just find the nearest neighbor. <clears throat> we could do a linear interpolation where we draw a straight line between the two uh, neighboring points and then evaluate y want at x want along that line. Or we could do higher order interpolants. So instead of a straight line, use other kinds of curves to the local data points and maybe other approaches. <clears throat> so one question that often comes up is how does curve fitting differ from interpolation. <clears throat> and this is something that um, newcomers struggle quite a lot with. Normally interpolation is done locally between only a few points, often two bounding points. Curve fitting, uh, in contrast, makes use of a best fit curve everywhere. And usually a best fit curve won't pass through all the data points <clears throat> because there might be noise in the data or you are trying to find an underlying model form, or you don't know the actual uh, model that was used to generate the data, and you're just trying to fit um, <coughs> your function. So a curve fit is, is used in those situations, whereas interpolation, you consider the points themselves, and you're not worried about a single curve through everything. You just want to know uh, an intermediate point, and so you're usually looking at the local environment, the two ne nearest neighbor points. Even if you want an intermediate point to some given data, <coughs> or sorry, if you want an intermediate point to some given data, then use interpolation. If you want to fit a model through some scattered data and then evaluate the model, then you can use curve fitting. So think about some examples where you might use this uh, in your real, in your life or in the um, kinds of problems that you're working on. Go ahead and pause the video and just think of some examples to try to flush that out. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and create our own linear interpolation code and uh, see what we need to do to have that work. So with linear interpolation, we have the two nearest neighbor points that bound our wanted point, and then we're going to draw a straight line between those points and then evaluate the straight line at the wanted x value, and that'll give us the desired wanted y value. <clears throat> so we need to know what the linear interpolation formula is, and for that we need the uh, equation for a line between two points. So we'll call the point on the left uh, 0 and the point on the right point 1. So these aren't 0 and 1 as in the index uh, of an array. These are just the point on the left is 0 and the point on the right is point 1. So we can equate slopes. So if we have a straight line between the data, then we can say that the slope on the between the wanted point and the left point is the same as the slope between the uh, right point and the left point. And that gives us the equation for the line, and then we can solve that for the wanted y want, and we get the equation at the bottom here. <clears throat> so it's important that you don't just memorize the equation for a line. Instead, you should 
have this, you should understand this intuitively so that you can write it down as needed. And you can understand either one of these. So this one equates the slopes and then solves the equation for y1. You can also intuit this uh, bottom equation, you can understand that intuitively. So the, the wanted point is the left point plus a delta y. This whole quantity highlighted is a delta y. And we can see that because here we have a slope, delta y over delta x times a delta x gives us the desired delta y between point, the wanted point and y0. So that's how you can think of it. The x's cancel. They don't exactly cancel, but in terms of their units, they cancel. And so we're effectively uh, scaling the slope by the, uh, by the delta x. Um, or you can think of this as your wanted point is your left point plus a step x0 minus x want along the slope delta y over delta x. So a couple ways to think of that. Okay, let's look at the code. So we call a function, linterp, and we pass in the x array and the y array, and then our desired point x want. And then <clears throat> we're going to assume that x, uh, the x array is uniformly spaced. So we'll make delta x be uh, x g1 minus x g0. So these are in this case, we're looking at the array indices, x1 minus x0. <clears throat> and then we need to know our location in the grid. So let's go back to the plot. So we need to know which points are our neighbors. So if the star is here, we have point 0, 1, 2. If the star is over here, it'd be these points, and we need to find those locations. So the way to do that is to have a delta x and we just take our <coughs> point um, minus the left point divided by the number of intervals and that'll give us our location and we'll do int on that so that we get the uh, the location itself so let's go look at what that looks like in the code so i0 that's the index that we're interested in is int x1 minus xg0 divided by dx the int just takes us from a floating point number to uh, an integer, so it takes us from an intermediate point to the leftmost integer. <coughs> and then the right point is just the left point plus 1. And now we can just evaluate the formula that we had on the last slide and return that. Okay, now that we have our function, we can define some data, and um, then we can... Uh, print the uh, x given and the y given data. We have a x want of 2.5, so x want is between these two points, 2 and 3. That means that y want should be halfway between these two points, 1.88 and 1.43, and we see that that happens. We get 1.65. So there you go, a simple interpolation function that we created ourselves. Okay. Now let's go ahead and look at the built-in solver. So SciPy has an interpolator for us so that we don't have to write our own. We have a new library <coughs> in, uh, from scipy.interpolate import interpol1d. So this is the function we're going to use to do, use the built-in interpolator, interpol1d. And it takes two arguments, the x given data and the y given data and it returns a function. So it doesn't directly do the interpolation. It returns a function that we can then call whenever we want to evaluate an interpolation point. So we have some given x, y data, and then we call interp1d, x given and y data, and it returns a function <coughs> which we assign to name f underscore interp. And then we just call f underscore interp wherever we want to evaluate the function. So this is particularly convenient because now we have a function that will just evaluate anywhere we're at in the whole profile and it will evaluate y want for given x want. So pretty easy to use. You've got some data, you call interp1d on xg and yg and it gives you a function which you assign to a variable name called f underscore interp and because it's a function we can call it f underscore interp x want and we get the result. So this is a little new, assigning a function to a variable or having functions that return functions in this case. We're used to things returning 
numbers or other kinds of quantities, but it's a little different to have something and return a function. And you can do this with anything you want. So you can go like AA equals print, and then we can go AA hi there. And this is because we've assigned AA to the same function as print in the same way that you could go BB equals 2.5. It holds that value here. AA holds the print function. And in our case, we have interp1d returns a function which we store as f underscore interp and then call it. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and take the previous xgyg data and plot the data as points. So we'll plot a thousand points of the underlying function used to get the xg and yg and call it xx. And then we'll also plot the linear interpolation at the same uh, 1,000 points. So there's our xg, yg. We have the interp function. And then we're creating 1,000 points that are good for plotting. And so we're going to plot the underlying function that was used to generate the given data. And that's this green line in the curve. And then we want to evaluate our interpolation function at all of those thousand x points to get the corresponding y points, and those will be the straight lines between the points. So we're actually evaluating the interpolation function at a thousand points, and when we do that, we recover these straight line segments. So you can kind of see how good the data fit is. In some places it's pretty good, and in some places it's not that great. But remember, the interpolator only knows about the points that you give it. It doesn't know about the behavior of the underlying function in between that was used to generate the blue uh, data points. So it's doing the best that it can, assume, assuming linear relation between the points. So you can do a little bit better <clears throat> if you, um, instead of using a linear interpolation, if you use a cubic spline. So a cubic spline uses a cubic function between data points and it's specified in such a way that you have a nice uh, smooth conditions between the points. The various splines line up in it. They're both continuous and smooth in terms of their derivatives. So here we have, <coughs> if we add kind equals cubic to the data, then we can see how this changes. So when we do f interp, we'll just go kind equals quote cubic. And for all of this, you should go ahead and type along so that you get develop the muscle memory and help make these keywords and how to type them stick a little better. So here's our initial curve, and you can see the straight lines. When we type cubic, you can see that we get not straight lines anymore. We get these cubic uh, functions in between. And so in some places, it got significantly better. In fact, it looks better in most of the regions especially here, but in other regions it's not as great. Like right here, the linear interpolation is probably better. <coughs> Let's go ahead and have a look at that. Yeah, so it depends on what your data looks like, if it's going to make an improvement or not. Okay. <coughs> okay, so what happens if you try to interpolate a a value outside of the total bounds uh, of what you're given. Let's go ahead and try that. So um, let's say at the bottom here we go x, let's go f interp and pick a point that's out of bounds. So 11, for example. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Go ahead and try it. Do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's going to crash? I personally hope that it works, but in fact it crashes complains a value in x nu is above the interpolation range. So we would call this extrapolation. If you're out of bounds, you're basically saying I want to extrapolate the data and the default is that it doesn't allow you to extrapolate. It gives you an error. We can force it to extrapolate, however, if we add a keyword <coughs> fill underscore value equals quote extrapolate. And you can see these if you just look at the documentation help F, uh, interp 1d. Now if we do this, then we come down to the bottom and go f interp 11. It works just fine. And what it's doing is linear, interp linear extrapolation. So it's drawing a line between these two points and it's evaluating that at point 11. So it's going to come up here to 3.76.
clear up here is where it goes. Now this doesn't work with cubic splines, it only works currently with um, linear interpolation, but that's usually sufficient. <coughs> okay, so extrapolation. <coughs> and here's some details in the posted notes that you can see uh, some of the details. Okay, in summary, we import the library, we have some given x, g, y, g data, and we get an interpolation function, interp1d, x, g, y, g, if we store it as something, f, i in this case, and then we can evaluate f, i at any points that we want. x, want can be a single data point, or it can be <coughs> a whole array. Okay, and then, um, so here's again the code summary that kind of illustrates that. The library, you have some given data that you acquired somehow, in this case we specify it directly. And then we create the interpolation function from those given data, and then we evaluate it when, wherever we want. Okay, and so with that, I'll just leave you with a simple question. What if you have given x, y data arrays, and you know the y values instead of the x values? How would you change this so that you can uh, get the x values if you know y values that are in between the points? Okay, and with that, um, <clears throat> we're done.